When we're doing primary changes, we're working with this block right down here on the low left. And there are two broad categories of wheels. There's lift, gamma, gain. Or if I click this button, there's shadows, midtones, and highlights. And they are not the same. They're similar, but they're not the same. Let me illustrate. This is a 16-bit gradient that was created inside Photoshop and imported as a TIFF image into Resolve. And we can see what it looks like here on the scope. Let me blow this up a little larger so you can see it. And we'll just focus on one scope right there. We see that on the extreme left side, it's at 100%. That's pure white and pure black on the right. And all the shades of gray are contained in the middle. As I adjust lift, this wheel down here, as I grab this, allows me to make the shadows darker or lighter. And you can see how it's changing the grayscale and how it's moving the waveform. But notice that it's moving the entire line. It's moving the shadows the most, but the mids are being adjusted, and it's also adjusting the white level. It's exactly how the shadows control works inside Final Cut. See this button right here? That resets that setting. This resets all of the primary changes. When I adjust the gain, notice how it's making the highlights brighter, but it's also changing the angle of the entire line. And with gamma, notice how it's raising the middle, but it's also affecting the highlights and the shadows. There is an interconnectedness to it. The folks at Blackmagic described it as like pulling taffy. You're mostly adjusting the shadows, but everything else is getting stretched a little bit as well. When we go over to the log wheels, see shadow, midtone, and highlights. When I adjust the shadow, look at, there's almost like a hinge right here. And I'm pivoting around that hinge. The midtones are not really moving. The highlights are not moving at all. So I've got a very specific change that I'm making. Or here, notice how I'm just affecting a very specific section of the midtones, an important section, but it's much, much more granular, much less smooth than what we were working with before. And again, reset. The highlights, again, like a hinge right here at 50%. It doesn't affect the, the darker at all. It just affects the brighter parts of the image. Offset allows me to move everything all up or down. In other words, I move everything as a clump, which is really helpful. I can also adjust the color globally as opposed to by grayscale value. There's nothing wrong with lift gamma gain, there's nothing wrong with shadows, midtones, and highlights. They are six different settings. Lift gamma gain gets processed first, then shadows, mids, and highlights gets processed. The way that Resolve works, you'll probably have the better results if you work with lift gamma gain than with the shadows, mids, and highlights, at least to get started with, because the blending between each of those segments is smoother and will look less abrupt. That's not to say one is bad or one is good. It's just that they're different, and a good place to start is lift, gamma, gain. Shadows, mids, highlights, but calculated differently. This was an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar, taking a look at the color page inside DaVinci Resolve 19. For the complete version of this online training, please visit my store at larryjordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 374. By the way, when you need to stretch your training dollars, membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's almost 2,000 movies, hundreds of hours on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it multiple times each month. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.